warmest of greetings to you. I am your storyteller, Chip, and you know, a long time ago, there was a boy living all alone in a little village in China. He wasn't very rich; in fact, he was rather poor. But he did have something really large and glistening and precious dangling around his neck—a really huge jewel. He could have got a lot of money if he'd sold that jewel, but he didn't want to. He wanted to keep it because this jewel was one of the last gifts his mum gave him before she died, and so it was his only way of remembering her until the time he met the monkey. <laughs> Right at the start of this story, this poor boy was traveling through the villages of China, hoping to find a job that he could do to earn some money and and help himself to stay alive. And while he was traveling around, he met a girl, and they started talking. And after a while, they became friends. And they kept on talking some more. And after a while. They found they'd spent a lot of time together, and they kept on talking some more. And after a while, they decided to get married. Although in those days in China, you couldn't get married unless the father agreed. And the poor boy was a little bit nervous about going to see this beautiful girl's father because he was really rich. How would he feel about a poor boy like him, with no money and not even a family, marrying his daughter? Very nervously, that poor boy went to the rich man's house, went to his office, and knocked on the door and asked if he could marry the rich man's daughter. And the rich man, well, what do you think he said? No. At first, he was ready to say no, but then he caught sight of a sparkle just inside the boy's shirt, and he asked the boy to pull it out. And the boy produced that large, glistening jewel that was dangling around his neck. And when the rich man saw that, his eyes got wider. And they began to sparkle just like that jewel, and he said, "Well, you know, you can marry my daughter if you give me that jewel." Well, the poor boy hesitated, just like some of you here. He was he wasn't sure because this this was the only way he had of remembering his mum. So. He hesitated, and it was maybe because he didn't answer straight away that the rich man said, "Ha! See, you don't really want to marry my daughter. You are too selfish. You don't want to give up all that money that's dangling around your neck. You are such an insolent boy. You are not worthy of my daughter. Get out of my house at once." Well, the poor boy hadn't expected that. And he felt tears coming to his eyes, so he ran out of the house. He ran straight into a nearby forest and and found an orange tree where he sat down and cried. The tears fell from his face for so long. He was thinking about how he sh- he should have given the jewel up to marry the girl because okay, the jewel helped him remember his mum. But he was sure his mum would have wanted him to be happy. His mum would have wanted him to to marry that girl and be happy. And and well, if he'd given up the jewel to marry her, well, then every time he looked at her, he would have been happy twice. Once because she was his best friend, and twice because she would have reminded him of the jewel that his mum gave him. So he felt so silly, and he cried. And he cried until he was tired, and eventually he fell asleep right there, at the base of that orange tree. 
and he slept until the sun went down. And he was suddenly woken by a hairy finger poking inside his ear. Now the boy was terrified to find this thing wriggling inside his ear. He was so terrified, in fact, that he stayed really still and kept his eyes closed just in case it was a bear checking to see whether he was worth eating. He knew if you got up and start running away from a bear, it will chase you and it will swipe you and he didn't want any of that. So he stayed as still as he could and he felt more hairy fingers around his ears and around his neck and up his armpits and behind his knees and even up his nose. And as he listened, he realized that he was getting poked by all these different fingers all over his body. They were even poking his feet. And he could hear little voices, little voices saying, I wonder what it is. I wonder what it is. What is it? What could it possibly be? There were lots of these creatures around him now poking and he had no idea what they were. They were just poking him, their hairy fingers. And then one of them got on to his chest and still the boy tried to stay absolutely still and quiet. He didn't want to, to make these creatures know that he was alive just in case they started chasing him and swiping him and he didn't want any of that. So he stayed still and quiet. And then ooh, one of the creatures whacked him in the chest. And well, when that happened, the boy couldn't help it. He had to go, ooh. And one of the creatures, the creature that had been there on his chest said, oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's a drum. Look. And hit him again. Ooh. And all of the other creatures started to get really excited about this as the one that was sitting on the poor boy's chest began to drum out a song that went like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. We've got a big man drum. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come see our big man drum. Well, the boy didn't know what to think. He had all of these creatures around him now singing and dancing it seemed while one sat on top using him like a drum like this ooh, 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 ooh. that's it just like that we've got a big man drum ooh, 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 ooh. come see our big man drum and then one of the creatures said oh, why don't we take it home and before the boy could think he felt some hairy fingers underneath him, lifting him up and carrying him up, up, up into the orange trees. Now the boy knew that these trees were rather tall, so he kept his eyes shut. He kept his body as still as he could, hoping that he didn't scare the creatures into dropping him down on the ground below. It would be quite a long way to go. But it was really hard staying still because he had those creatures, that creature, still on his chest going, ooh, 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 ooh. we've got a big man drum. Ooh, 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 ooh. Don't drop the big man drum. Now these creatures were swinging through the trees. The boy felt himself swinging along with them. He kept his eyes closed, trying desperately not to let them know that he was alive, just in case he scared them now. And they dropped him while he was swinging through the trees. But as they went, it was really hard for him to keep still and quiet because he still had that creature on his chest going, ooh, 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 ooh. we've got a big man drum. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't drop the big man drum. Next, the boy heard two very strange noises. One was a creak, creak. And the next noise was the sound of something rushing really fast. Can you make that sort of sound? The sound of something going? Yeah, imagine that sort of sound, but very quiet, like it's very far away. That's it. It sounded really, really far away. And, and the boy was curious. He, he wanted to know what it was or what all these strange noises were. 
But he also knew he didn't want to scare these creatures into knowing that he was alive because they might drop him. So he kept himself as straight as he could and as still as he could, which was really hard because he still had the creature on his chest going, ooh, 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 ooh. we've got a big man drum. Ooh, 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 ooh. Don't drop the big man drum. Eventually, the swinging stopped and the boy felt himself being laid down in something really, really soft. And all of the creatures around him, they were really, really excited still. And then one of them took the large glistening jewel that was dangling around his neck. And the boy heard the creature say, <gasps> pretty stone. And another creature said, oh, I've got an idea. Why don't we get our other pretty stones and decorate our big man drum? Yeah. And before the boy knew it, <laughs> the creatures were running backwards and forwards and laying stones on him that were really, really cold. And they were putting them all over the place in lots of weird places, like in between his fingers and in his ears and up his nose. And they were laying them across his head and up his armpits. And the whole time he had one of them on top of him singing and playing. Ooh, 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 ooh. We've got a big man drum. Ooh, 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 ooh. Decorate our big man drum. Eventually, the boy heard lots of yawning from all around him. And one by one, those creatures went quiet. And the boy could tell it had gone dark outside. And after a while, he decided to risk opening one eye. And when he did that, he saw three incredible things. First, he was surrounded by sleeping monkeys. Monkeys that had carried him to their land. And so the second thing he saw was the land of the monkeys. It was amazing, the ground was full of moss, covered in moss. It felt like he was lying on a ginormous duvet, an incredibly large cushion. And all around it were these tree houses. But the third thing he saw was more amazing than all of that. Those stones, those cold stones that had been laid around his body were actually gems. And as he looked at them in the moonlight, there were sparkling blue sapphires. There were dazzling red rubies. There were shining green emeralds. And most amazing of all, there were sparkling bright diamonds that glistened with all sorts of different colors and they were clear and the boy knew he was now covered in so much wealth. So, as quietly and as gently as he could, he got himself up and started packing as many of those jewels into his pockets as he could. And when his pockets were full, he stuffed them into his shirt pockets. And when his shirt pockets were full, he stuffed them into his trousers and he stuffed them into his shoes. And then he stuffed them into his socks. He stuffed them up his sleeves. And then he tried to hold as many as he could in his hand. And then he turned and crept away from the land of the monkeys. And then he discovered what that creaking had been. That creaking had been a long thin bridge made of wood and rope. That was between two really tall cliffs. And as the boy looked down, he could see that rushing sound. Do you remember that rushing sound? How had it gone again? That's it. It was a river, a really fast river, bashing and swirling past rocks that the boy could make out. Maybe even a whole mile 
below, down the side of the cliff. So the boy actually let a few of the jewels go in order to be able to hold on to that bridge nice and tightly so that he didn't fall off because he didn't think he was going to be able to survive if he fell off this bridge and went down into that river. But after he got to the other side, he ran, he ran through the trees of the forest and he burst out back into the village where the rich man lived just as the sun was coming up over the horizon. He went straight into the rich man's house, went straight to his office and knocked on the door. And when the rich man let him in, he put all of those jewels on the table in front of him and said, now will you let me marry your daughter? Well, if you thought the rich man's eyes had been wide before, now they were so big they almost took over his face and they were sparkling with all of the different colours right on the table in front of him. And he demanded, before he gave the boy an answer to the question, he demanded to know how the boy had come across all of these fancy jewels. So the boy told him. He was an honest lad. He told him how he had gone to find an orange tree. In the, in, he'd gone into the forest and he had fallen asleep next to an orange tree. And then these monkeys had come and they'd found him. And he would kept really still and really quiet until they had picked him up, carried him through the trees and all the way to their own land where they had decorated him with all of these jewels. And the rich man listened to this story. And he decided he wanted to have some of that wealth for himself. So he asked the boy if he could have the large glistening jewel from around his neck so he could try and interest the monkeys in decorating him. And this time the boy had no hesitation. He took it straight off, knowing this is probably what his mum would have wanted for him, to get married to his best friend. So he passed the rich man that large glistening jewel. And as he did so, he said, so can I marry your daughter? And the rich man said, yes, 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 whatever. Took the jewel and ran. He ran out into the forest. He ran through the trees until he found the one that the poor man had fallen asleep next to. Uh, what, was, what was that tree again? Orange. That's it, an orange tree. He found the orange tree. He lay down next to the orange tree and he pretended to go to sleep. The rich man was really, really impatient because he was used to spending his money to, to get things now. He wasn't used to waiting, but, but he tried his best because he knew that this was going to make him richer than anyone else in China, maybe even richer than anyone else in the world. I mean, he was already pretty rich just with that one large glistening gem around his neck now. But all of the other stones that the monkeys had, the rich man was so excited. He was still excited and shaking with anticipation as the sun went down and the first hairy finger poked inside his ear. He kept his eyes shut as the monkeys were all around him poking his knees and poking his armpits and poking his fingers. And if the man had focused enough to listen to what they were saying, he would have heard them saying things like, what is it? What is it? It looks a little bit like our big man drum, but it's, it's different somehow. And all of our decorations have gone. Where's everything gone? It wasn't long though, before one of the monkeys got onto the rich man's chest and went, and when that happened, well, the rich man hadn't been expecting that. The poor boy had forgotten to mention that part of the story, believe it or not. And so, because he wasn't expecting it, the rich man went, Bleh! Bleh! And the monkey on top of him said, Hmm, well, it makes a very different noise, but it's still a drum. And he had another go. Bleh! And all of the other monkeys got really excited. The man, the rich man knew he had to be still and quiet, but he was now rather annoyed with the poor boy for not mentioning this part of the tale. And so he decided he was not going to let that poor boy marry his daughter. Not when he was now being treated like a meh. 
<laughs> drum by the monkeys. And the monkeys were dancing around him as the one on the chest played. <laughs> We've got a big man drum. <laughs> Come see our big man drum. And then one of the monkeys declared that they should take the big man drum back to their homes. They could guard it more closely this time. And so the rich man、oh. felt the fingers underneath lifting him up, and just like the poor boy had said, he kept his eyes closed. He kept as still as he could, but that was really difficult because he had the monkey on his chest playing and singing. <laughs> We've got a big man drum. <laughs> Don't drop our big man drum. The rich man felt himself now swinging through the trees from side to side, desperately trying to keep himself still and with his eyes closed, because, like the boy had said, he didn't want to let the monkeys drop him. But as he was going through, that was really, really difficult because he still had one sitting on his chest and going. <laughs> We've got a big man drum. <laughs> Don't drop the big man drum. And then. The rich man heard two very strange noises. There was this creaking noise, and in the distance there seemed to be a, a rushing noise. Is it like that? And this filled the rich man with such curiosity and such a, a, a little bit of terror as well that he thought. He really needed to see what this was because he couldn't remember the poor boy saying anything about a part of the journey where there was creaking and a, and a rushing sound. So he just opened one eye a tiny fraction, hoping that the monkeys wouldn't see. And when he saw that he was on this really thin rope bridge with that raging river all that mile away below, he screamed, "Don't drop me!" <laughs> And when the monkeys realised that their big man drum was alive, they dropped him. <laughs> they dropped him over the side of the bridge and down and down and down into that raging river, and he was washed clean out of the story. But the poor boy can't be called a poor boy anymore because with all of those stones. And with the inheritance that his new wife had from her father, who'd gone missing, he and his new wife got to live very happily for the rest of their lives. And you know, sometimes when I tell stories like this, I get people asking me if they are true. And this is one of those stories that, actually, if you look around, you will see proof. Because even today, the monkeys miss their big man drum, and so what they do is they go around beating their own chests to remember the big man drum that they had once found. And if you listen really, really closely, you will hear them singing. <coughs> We had a big man drum. <coughs> Where is our big man drum? Thank you so much for sharing that story with me. It's such a fun tune that they bash out, isn't it? Ooh, 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 ooh. I think that's why it's got to be one of my favourite stories. But you know, there's also a story that explains the mystery about why monkeys live up in trees. If you're an epic explorer, that won't be a mystery for much longer because that is the bonus story you can enjoy right now. And if you're not an epic explorer yet, head to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out. How to become one? Oh, and while you're there, why not have a go at our epic challenge? If you send some of your creativity to me, then I will have a very special gift to send back to you. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon.